Hey everybody, some gadget guy here with a quick tip for the Nokia Lumia 2520. Now, during our coverage of the Surface 2, one of my favorite things about working with the Surface has been this full-sized USB port. This is a full USB 3 port, which allows you to do some really cool things with uh, what would otherwise be a very normal consumer tablet. Not the least of which is just using a USB 3 flash drive, if I can plug that in right there to transfer files over to your tablet very, very quickly and very easily. That's something we just can't do on an iPad, and it can be a little hit or miss on some of the Android tablets out there. Now, the 2520 does not have that awesome full-sized USB port. Nokia does not include a USB 3 OTG cable in the 2520 box. However, one of the cool things about this USB cable spec is that it does give us USB host capabilities on the Lumia 2520. We're just going to need an adapter. So while it's not quite as seamless as the full-sized USB port on the Surface 2, there is just part of this USB 3 cutout here where if we take a micro USB OTG cable, USB OTG cable, and I just kind of line it up with that port right there and pop that in. Oh, yep, the Surface is, uh, the, excuse me, the Lumia is already recognizing it. This USB OTG cable is giving us a full-size USB port to connect to our Kingston data traveler here. Now, we don't get that full USB 3 speed when using uh, this kind of an adapter. So if I just move, now let's move the video file. So this is a 400 meg file. We're just gonna move this over here to the desktop. Yeah, and CNR max speed is sort of topping out around 35. It started out at 40 megabytes. Uh, if uh, if you saw my review of the Kingston Data Traveler, we connected this to the Surface 2, and it bursts at something insane, like 200 megabytes, megabytes, not megabits, megabytes per second. So you're really only getting, at best, about a quarter of the speed of USB 3. But when we're moving files over, and you saw that was a 400 plus megabyte file that just transferred over to the desktop on the Lumia 2520. And that's respectable enough performance, at least to warrant keeping one of these little dongle adapters with you so that you can interact with uh, various uh, USB peripherals. Case in point, we're going to see now, I haven't tested this yet, so we'll see if this works, but we're gonna plug uh, a USB audio device into the Lumia 2520 using this adapter to see if that's going to communicate properly. So this is a Zoom H4n. Let's see, okay, so it'll show up as mass storage, that's good, but let's see if it'll show up as an audio interface using this adapter. So we're gonna put audio interface, we're gonna hit connect. And it's installing just the standard USB peripheral drivers. Now, hopefully, if this works, what we should see... Oh, so it's showing me a, the audio interface there, but what I want to see is if it'll eventually move all of the audio over to the Zoom. The cool thing about this setup is when you plug it into a Surface 2, it takes over the mics and the speaker off of the Surface and then puts it over to this USB interface that makes it actually a pretty handy portable recording solution. But let's see where we're at with these drivers. Oh, looks like it's loading some stuff up now. H4n is doing its gig. I, I, I love that, you know, when we're using just sort of standard USB audio drivers, and we're using standard peripheral drivers, these Windows tablets have actually done a phenomenal job of, uh, of communicating with various devices that you would think would be too complicated for a tablet. I mean, it's, it's really hard to plug something like the H4n into an Android tablet and then use it for mobile recording. But uh, let's see, so if I turn this over, I'm gonna turn up the volume. And now if I do this video, let's see if it puts, Yep, the audio is playing off of the uh, off of the H4n. That's pretty fantastic. Stop it! You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. Look. 
Not that you would want to do that because the single speaker on the back of the H4n isn't quite as nice as the stereo speakers on the 2520. Well, folks, I hope that has uh, illuminated some additional uh, usability scenarios for those of you folks uh, interested in shopping the Lumia 2520. Uh, just because it's Windows 8 and it's not and it doesn't have a full-size USB port doesn't mean that you can't use USB peripherals with this tablet, which is fantastic. Should help make this even an even better productivity tool than some of the other uh, consumer-grade tablets that we see in this space. And just uh, kind of exciting seeing the hardware that Nokia's put out there. We're gonna have a full review on the 2520 out soon. We already have the speaker test up, so you can hear the wonderful front-firing uh, stereo speakers on the 2520. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all on the next video.